Hi, welcome to Spool to Cool. Hey, John, did you say that your 3D printer could paint? Yeah! And you paint it on the CD or a DVD? What's that look like? Show them that. How in the heck did you do that? That kind of makes it a 3D printer doodle, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, and this is done in Sharpie. Sharpie? Like the pencils? Like the ink pencils? No? What do you call that? This is mar Permanent marker? Permanent marker? Yeah. That's, that's amazing. So, how It's even transparent right in there. Yeah, so if you have a video yeah. game or movie and you want it labeled, a 3D printer can actually do this, I guess. And John's going to show us how in a minute, I mentioned, right? Yeah, pretty much. So I made this bracket on my 3D printer so that I can hold an ink pen, a Sharpie. It just fits in there like that. It fits loosely so that if something does jam into it, it won't damage the tip of the marker. Or the object it's touching. It'll just pop out like that. So let's go ahead and tape this in here. So here we go. I'm going to put this between the two stepper motors. See if you can see that. And it won't stay in very good on its own. So I usually put a piece of tape. Just blue tape is all it takes. And get that flush there so it's all the way down as far as it goes. And just tape this in like that. And then for prep, I usually put a piece of paper on this so that you don't get glue all over whatever you're working with. Like if you're working with a CD, you won't get glue on the back of the CD and mess up how it writes and reads. So now I am going to put the marker in after I run it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll go over here to the computer and I hit the start on the print. Now there's some code that I did special for this. We'll get to that in a little bit. So after it homes, it is going to move to the center that it thinks the picture is going to be centered at. And once it does that, I can put the marker in. At this point it's doing a pause code, which I have to modify my pause codes from my previous video so it doesn't go to point zero, it just goes to point zero of the image. So there's the center of the image, that's what I call point zero of the image, it's really not zero, but that's the center of the image. And so now I'll go over there and hit the continue button and it would normally do the image. It's not going to touch whatever's on there right now because it will not go very much big, big a difference there right now. So it's just going to roam around pretty much right now. But just to show you what it does. See, it goes up and down, moving the part that would normally be on there, touching the marker. Now some markers are longer than others, so because I switch markers every so often, it will be necessary to adjust the build plate to make sure the marker will hit it properly. So I just kind of eyeball it and get it on there as close as I can and then hit the start. That's why I have it in the this, in this center mark so I can get it adjusted. So after it does all that, then I switch markers and continue on until I get to the last file. This is the code. It's in Python. First I import um, pill low, which is a fork of pill. And then I uh, have this function, which is the same as the one in my Commodoreizer effect, which is on my other channel. You might want to check that out. I'll have a link down there somewhere. And uh, then I just define a palette. This is just a comment here. I put what colors I want in the comment, just so for my own reference. And then I put those colors in here and repeat it until I get 256 colors in that array. And then down here I make a new image with the palette 
mode in 16 by 16 and I put the palette into that image temporarily. That way I can apply the palette using this function up here and we'll, we'll get to that in just a sec. I make a dot size of how big the dot is and in actuality the dot size turned out to be only 0.4 around about maybe 0.5 so I ended up adjusting some other things to compensate for that. So printer defs, this is just def defining what my printer is going to be using for center points and stuff. Like here's the center that I got that set to X100 and Y70. Lift I have six and that's how much it lifts total including the little bit at the beginning. Lift minimum is how far it goes back up to touch the object. And then I got the speed. This is in millimeters per second, so you can see that's pretty fast. It's like 15,000. And then I put a define for G code pause, and that's actually a necessary thing. And actually, on mine, it's at pause because it's not really a G code, it's actually part of the host software. And then I put whatever move command I'm using, whether it be G1, G0, or whatever it uses to move. This is just defining what each one is and I put whatever the home command is in this case G28 and whatever the absolute positioning switcher is I put that in this case is G90 and a descale that's where I increase the resolution and that basically makes the image bigger but um, squishes the dots together closer so I put that on two so so now these point fours will pretty much be touching each other. And then I have the image. I open the image. I just named it IMG. And then I convert it to RGB. And then right after that, I resize it to be whatever scale that D scale is multiplied into it. So I scale it up by D scale. And I do image nearest. And the reason why I do that is I don't want to, to do any dithering whatsoever. So I put on nearest so that each pixel stays as each pixel. And then down here I do the quantize to palette, which is that function up there. And I put dither to true. And that's basically that. I save the image for previewing purposes. Not really necessary. But, and then... I add in the offset from center that the zero zero point on the uh, image is. It's the point in the far left upper corner. And of course I have to get the data. And in this case the data will just be from the palette like zero through eleven because like I'm using like ten colors plus white. And then I do this for loop. This loops for, through every color. Uh, this should be one not two because I want to start at 2 at one point because I already had one done. Anyway, uh, so I open a, a G-code file with the indice of the color and I start writing. So I write the home command. I write absolute positioning. This is all G-code stuff down here. And then we got a move to lift it up out of the way and we move again to put it at the position in the middle and actually this could be done differently but we'll just leave it um, then we do the pause now at this point we're sitting in the middle waiting to be adjusted and putting the marker in now down here after we finish the pause and this all runs instantly pretty much it's just uh, one of put the g-code into the host it'll do its thing like that and then uh, then down here I do this for loop so this for loop is going to loop through every y position and this one is an if statement that determines which line we're on if it's an odd line we go the the backwards direction if it's an even line we go forwards. that just speeds things up a little bit on the printing speed and then we have this for loop. We loop through every x in the C. But when we do it, we go in the direction of xr. So we got the range xr, 
which is defined from this if statement. And then down here we convert x and y into the actual data position, that's p. And we got x and y just defined on here, but by the way those loops were ix and iy, so that they're not going to conflict. So ix times dot size times d scale plus offset, that gives us the actual position in millimeters. Same thing with the y, just so it's y and iy and offset 1. Then you got position is just x and y. And then down here, we got if, that if there is going to tell us basically is it the color we're on. If we're on that color, then we do the move to the position of that color that we're using. And then we lift the pin up and back down again. Or actually down and back up again, rather say. And uh, then we, after all those loops are done and we're done with that color, but we're not like, you know, we're going to the next color, then uh, we write into there the home position. And then also we close the file. And then we loop around, we do a new file, we get a new color, and it just does that until we finished off all the colors. And that's that. As for the image, my printer is a little backwards. So I have to mirror the image. This is the image that's on that disk right there. And so I mirror the, mirrored it so that it would get it printing right. This one's actually old. I don't even need that one. Let's get rid of that. And so once I run the Python code, I'm going to run it right now so you can see it. It's pretty quick. There we go. And I don't need it open anymore. And it'll generate a bunch of files, 1 through 10 in this case, because I'm using 10 colors. You can always use different colors if you want to. Um, just keep in mind that the 0 index always has to be 1. I mean, uh, white. <laughs> 0 index always has to be white. And then the rest are the colors you want. So 1 through 10 are colors except for white. And then from there, I put these into the uh, host. I don't even need to use the slicer because that's what the Python code is for. Put them in this host program and I just run that and do the print like I showed earlier.